Now, after having discussed about the cardiac action potential, now let me discuss about the antiarrhythmic drugs. Now, if you take this particular antiarrhythmic drugs, this antiarrhythmic drugs All right, this anti-arrhythmic drugs, they are classified into five classes. That is class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the name of this particular classification is, it is Singh and Wagen Williams classification of the anti-arrhythmic drugs. So, it is called as the Singh and Wagen Williams classification. Wagen Williams classification right so this is the classification of the anti arrhythmic drugs now a point what I want to tell you here is this particular scheme that is this scheme classifies a drug based on its primary mechanism of action right so this classification is based on the mechanism of action of the antiarrhythmic drugs now now there are totally five main classes right there are totally five main classes now you take class 1 class 1 antiarrhythmic drugs they are sodium channel blockers Right, they are sodium channel blockers. Then you take class 2 anti arrhythmic drugs, they are beta blockers. All right, they are beta blockers. Then you take class 3 anti arrhythmic drugs. Right, class 3 anti arrhythmic drugs, they are potassium channel blockers. Right, they are potassium channel blockers. Then you have class 4 anti arrhythmic drugs. So, if you take class 4 anti arrhythmic drugs, they are calcium channel blockers. Alright, they are your calcium channel blockers. And class 5 anti arrhythmic drugs. They are miscellaneous drugs. Right? They are your miscellaneous drugs. Now, now let me discuss about the class 1 agents. Right? Let me discuss about the class 1 agents. So, if you take this class 1 agents, remember the class 1 anti arrhythmic agents, what do they do? They interfere with the activity of the sodium channels, right? So, class 1 anti arrhythmic agents, they interfere, right? They interfere with the activity of. Right, they interfere with the activity of the sodium channels. All right, they interfere with the activity of the sodium channels. Now, you take the sodium channels in your cardiac action potential. So, which phase was requiring your sodium channels? Remember, it was your phase 0. So, in phase 0, once the cardiac muscle cell once it receives adequate stimulus, the sodium channels they open and the sodium enters into the cell and that will result in the rapid depolarization. Okay. So, now once these class 1 agents interfere with the activity of the sodium channels, thus all of these drugs can decrease the slope of phase 0. Right. So, all these drugs, right, all these drugs, they decrease the slope of right they decrease the slope of the phase 0 
right and what is this phase 0 considered as Vmax. Now why do we consider it as Vmax because there is opening of the fast sodium channels a large quantity of the sodium enters into the cell and there is rapid depolarization what is taking place in your phase 0. So that is why we use the word Vmax. Now most frequently the sodium channels they open and so what I want to tell you here is more is your sodium channels that get opened greater will be the blockade by these particular drugs. So that is it is use dependent blockade. Okay. So So remember a point here, most frequently the sodium channels open right most frequently the sodium channels open right most frequently the sodium channels open greater will be the blockade right greater will be the blockade by this drugs right greater will be the blockade by these drugs right and this is what is called as a use dependent blockade right this is what is called as use dependent blockade okay next now remember this particular class 1 agents they are classified according to the action of these drugs on the potassium channels okay so if you take class 1 this particular class 1 we again classify this into three types right we again classify this into three types that is class 1a then you have class 1b and then you have class 1c right 1a 1b and then 1c now how are these further classified these again class 1 are further sub classified into 1a 1b 1c according to action of these drugs on the potassium channels right according to action of these drugs on the potassium channels these are again further subclassified into 1a 1b and then 1c now let me discuss in detail about what are 1a drugs what are 1b drugs and what are 1c drugs and how do they affect the potassium channels right so before going into further discussion let me shortly revise about the class 1 agents remember these class 1 agents they interfere with the activity of the sodium channels so all these drugs they decrease the slope of the phase 0 because phase 0 is because of your the sodium channels right and most frequent so more is the quantity of the sodium channels that are being opened greater will be the blockade by these particular drugs and this is what is called as a use dependent blockade and this class 1 agents are again subclassified into 1a 1b and 1c based on the action of these drugs on the potassium channels so now let me discuss about class 1a 1b and then 1c agents